What we will experience in the next several decades has been termed by some as the silver tsunami. The aging population will change the way we live and will change the way we die. Our healthcare system is not prepared for this and so I would like to support a grassroots movement in increasing awareness for mainstream people and taking back our power as people around how we die. The television program 60 Minutes reported that in 2008, Medicare paid $50 billion just for doctor and hospital bills during the last two months of patients' lives. That's more than the budget of the Department of Homeland Security or the Department of Education. 7,000 baby boomers become Medicare beneficiaries every day. That's two and a half million a year. 70 million people will go on Medicare in the next 20 years. The calm before the storm has passed and what we need to know the most about, we know least about. Within every problem is a solution and an opportunity. Together we can affect change and support new paradigms in how we live and how we die for a sustainable future. It's a lovely pressure to help, to kind of encourage us to really think about what we're doing because we're barely meeting the demand now and we know we've got we've got a I think a tsunami is an accurate word we've got a lot of people dying in the next 20 30 40 years so I think there's and because hospice principles are so grounded in reality per se the reality of our mortality I think we as a, as an institution or as a, as a, as a field need to follow the suffering and there's a lot of suffering coming our way. And that's to say nothing of sort of modern contemporary society that's gotten very complex, very fractured, very alienating, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm happy for the organizing principle and the sense of urgency that our demographics provide us. Not to sound too clinical or sort of uh, uh, cold, but truly, um, I think it's a really important time and we have to get our stuff together. So there's an urgency, and it's you know it's one of the one of the things I love about our field is it's we have this beautiful metaphor at our fingertips at all times by dealing with mortality, by dealing with the clock, by dealing with prioritization. Just watching what our patients go through is the perfect stream for us to follow as a field. We are a death denying culture. Uh, we have a long history of that. Um, and I think it will take a generation for that to change. But I personally feel that the baby boomer generation is that generation. But I also want to echo your point about separating the healthcare system per se from medicine. I, have, I find myself, when I was within medicine, I was a bit of a critic of medicine. Now that I'm a little bit outside of medicine, I'm a defender of medicine. <laughs> I think there's, there's something in between. Medicine is not inherently evil, of course. Uh, most everyone goes into that field because they want to help people, they care. But the systems, which serve a purpose, no doubt, um, often end up uh, getting in the way. Um, there are mixed agendas, um, well, for all sorts of reasons, I don't know that we have time to talk about, but I just want to salute the idea of separating the system from medicine. I'm a little afraid and leery of uh, demonization I see happen around medicine. I don't think it's particularly useful. Um, and it's sort of like the old fashioned choices we made patients go through. You either went for aggressive curative care or you went for a hospice. In other words, you either chose between quantity of life and quality of life. And that was a false dualism. And that, was, that reflected the system. That was a systemic problem that Medicare made us choose. That's not a natural choice. And it's not even, a, it's, not, it's not a real choice. Palliative care has done a great job of blurring that distinction a little bit and moving farther upstream. I think physicians who treat people with serious illness, oncologists certainly, but 
pulmonologists, cardiologists, neurologists, others, um, are in a really difficult position uh, these days, certainly in the United States, which is what my experience is. Uh, we don't have a health care system. We have a disease treatment system. And we have a disease treatment curriculum. So we ever more teach the physiology and pharmacology of disease and its treatment and subjugate, subordinate the personal experience of the people who are our patients. I think our medical education system, and I now for the last handful of years have become part of it, are continuing, is continuing to fail physicians in training. We are not teaching them uh, some of the basics of caring well for people who have disease. Uh, diseases that are life-threatening and, and sometimes clearly life-limiting. So it's hard to be a physician in this day and age in the United States. People come to us really expecting cures, demanding them, and often feel abandoned if we talk about the limits of our ability to cure or prolong their lives.